All right, YouTube, so pretty straightforward job here. Nothing really special at all, just a Hyundai i30. Why am I making a video on this one? Just because I feel like it. <laughs> kind of in a good mood, it's Friday today. It's the end of the month, so our boss puts on lunch for us. They go like uh, KFC and pizza, or sometimes they get like chicken treat, which is a West Australian version of uh, KFC. Don't get it anywhere else in Australia. I'd never even heard of it until I came over here. So, yeah, just a bit of paper inside this guard edge. The guard to door edge. What you may call a fender. Or a wing over in the UK. And I just asked the boss before, this is another part of the reason I'm in a good mood, like we're starting to get rid of most of the work at the moment and Monday is usually the quiet day at this shop. Waiting for the panel waiters to get the jobs repaired to come into the paint shop. And I just said to the boss, hey, I'll please have Monday off. And he said, yeah, why not? You know, as I work hard when I'm here, so it's good to get rewarded by having a day off every now and then. Honestly, I'd, I'd love to do three day weeks at this point in time in my life. That'd be awesome. So yeah, I mixed and matched the colour last night on this one because I knew it was going today. And prepped my blends up. I was just waiting overnight for the primer to fully cure up. I did put the lights on it so shouldn't get much shrink back. I'm going to put some non-sanding primer over the fender and front bumper over there. Brand new front bar. Should have this masked up within 10 minutes and yeah, get it done, get it painted before morning tea and then I've got a bit of polishing to finish the day off with. Did this uh Mazda CX-9 in machine grey two days ago and that needs a polish today. Bit of a prick of a colour. The boss pointed out the colour difference from the rear bar and I said, yeah, but you look at my colour. Oh, here comes the boss. Yeah, boss just walked in to ask about a job and uh, took my GoPro off. Turned it off, went to put it in my pocket a little bit too quick and the thing just slammed on the floor. Still working. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Like this, this GoPro here that you're seeing wearing on my head now. Um, I was recording, I rem still remember it was a, uh, <coughs> you guys probably remember the regulator review that I did. And um, I was doing a bit of recording in the paint room. And I had the camera sitting directly above uh, the, the old tub of thinners that you put your stirring sticks in. So like really old dirty thinners. And I, uh, dry, I went to grab the camera to turn it off or to stop it or turn it on or something. And it dropped straight into the dirty can of thinners. Like this GoPro really shouldn't work, <laughs> but it does. It's amazing. Like the buttons are all sticky and they still are a little bit sticky and it's hard to turn on, but it still works. Amazing. All right. Right to shut. It's all good down there. So I could put these little bits of foam in here these days. I never used those to just uh, roll up a piece of masking tape and put it in there. But this does work a lot better, quicker, easier, and it seals the gap a bit better. I saw one of the other painters around the shop doing it. 
that I'm doing it enough times, I'm like, yeah, that's actually a good idea. Put that one in my own bag of tricks, and that's what this trade's about, really. Like, just learning from others, just actually actively watching what other people do and asking the right amount of questions and the well, the right questions, you know. It's like this guy I work with, the old dude, Frankie. He's a good old dude. He's got like his rock and roll band here in Perth. Frankie and the Rockets, and he was telling me the other day that uh, he had this mature age apprentice who he thought he knew everything. He was being a bit of an ass to him, and he said, if you want to learn, you ask me. I'm not going out of my way to tell you things. If you ask, I'll answer, but if you're not keen to learn, I'm not going to, go, I'm not going to spend the time out of my day to tell you things. Yeah, just like a know-it-all sort of middle-aged. He was like 36, but still an apprentice, and he's like, uh, oh, blah blah blah. You shouldn't have done that job like this. Like telling him, who's been in the trade for years, how to do his job, and, and then Frank just said to him, "I'm going to give you two jobs this month, and you're going to mess them both up." I swear. He's like, "No, no, I'm not going to." Sure enough, give him a job. Mess it up, gives him another one, mess it up, and then he just basically goes, you know, it's not as easy as what you might think, is it, you know? You're a mouthpiece, but then <coughs> when push comes to shove, you don't actually have the skills to back it up. Yeah, there can be a bit of bitching in panel shops. This one's not so bad for it. It's, it's not bad for it, actually, but some shops you work in, man, it's just... Uh, worse than a bunch of women, mate. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with women, but we, we do know that they can be a little bit bitchy. You know, some of the shops I worked in back in Melbourne, it just got too much after a while. He said, she said, talking shit about each other behind each other's back. Yeah, this colour is not the best for coverage. I left the base coat a touch thick just to get a bit better coverage and it covered quite well over the um, the wet on wet F4, like the mid-grey, so it's not light or dark grey, it's the mid-grey wet on wet, so I'll put that down. Yeah, last weekend on, uh, I probably, you probably heard me say it in a couple of other videos by now, but last Friday I get home and computer just died. I think it must have been the motherboard. So, $1,300 later, got myself a beefy gaming computer again. Well, it's actually an editing rig, really. I haven't even got any games on there. I have no immediate plans to put any games on there. I've kind of gone off gaming again lately. From around 2010, 11, um, I was right into gaming like 2009, 10 and 11. I was playing StarCraft heaps, Battlefield Bad Company 2 and all those other games and that with mates and even start like part of this um, online clan called the Outlaws and that was cool. You know, you'd have like uh, TeamSpeak servers and ventrilo servers and that and you'd all just like jump in and you know play online together and it was great fun but then around the time I moved over here I just kind of got over it let it go and then in the last year or so I started getting back into it but starting to get over it a bit again lately just in the last few months I haven't like I got Horizon, bought Horizon Zero Dawn recently and played an hour of it and it just it looks like a great game, but just the amount of time you got to spend on some of these games, it just gets a bit daunting. I love The Witcher 3, but I've got that on PC, but it just got to the point, it's like, man, I'm never going to finish this. Like, it tells you how much percent of the way through the game you are, and I was like, 
10% and 60 hours in, it's like, man, if I finish this game, it's going to be like 600 hours or something, you know. But I guess that's um, that might have actually just been to 100% the game. So I probably could have actually got through the story in a reasonable amount of time if I had kept at it. But yeah, I did really enjoy that game, The Witcher. They got lots of things right. But yeah, the other part of it is just not having time these days, you know. Get home from work, kind of mentally want to switch off, and gaming does require a bit of sort of mental energy, I, I think, anyway. Um, I'm definitely over online gaming, just the competitive and repetitive side of it. You know, it's just the same thing. You, even StarCraft, which I did love, at the end of the day, you are just doing the same thing each time you go to play. Like all those Fortnites and stuff, you know, I never got into that. I honestly would never know how to play it. I've only watched like probably 10 minutes worth of gameplay on it, it didn't really grab me. Yeah, last online shooter I got right into, that was Battlefield Bad Company, so I loved that game, man, it was so fun. I actually had that game on every platform. I had it on PC, I had it on PS3 and Xbox 360. That's how much I loved it. Yeah, these days, like, I, I watch a lot, a lot more YouTube gaming news and stuff like that than I do actually spend playing the things. It's weird. I guess I just appreciate, you know, the uh, enthusiasm that some people have towards the games and, you know, the time and effort they put into making the videos. But it is a massively oversaturated market on YouTube. There's probably actually is too many <laughs> gaming channels. PewDiePie started it and then everyone wanted in on it. I love PewDiePie though. He's a funny bastard. He doesn't really do gaming anymore. I think he might occasionally do some game streams or something like that, but very rare that I've seen him do any games. And he just got over it. He, he, but he is actually just a naturally funny guy. Like sometimes you just put a PewDiePie video on and you'll just laugh. As soon as he says something, he doesn't mind taking the piss out of himself, which that's sort of my sense of humour. I've, I've always never been shy to make a joke at my own expense. Something I steer away from on YouTube, though. I'll leave that to the experts. One guy I've been getting right into, though. Um, I think I subscribed to his channel at like 10,000 and he's, geez, he must be above 300 or 400,000 now. Isaac Butterfield is an Australian dude. He's just really funny. But the other side of it is, you know, you piss people off no matter what. Like, you can be, you know, acclaimed as a great comedian and you're just going to piss people off. He, he make, like, Isaac Butterfield makes jokes at the expense of, um, cyclists, vegans, and obviously that's going to bring a bit of hate towards you, and I'm, I'm not interested in that, I couldn't be bothered with it, you know, just keep it positive, and yeah, I think society's not as uh, close-knit as what we used to be before social media, I don't think that's a good thing, so I'm not going to go out there to do things to be divisive. I think we all need to learn to get along a bit better, and when we do have issues, talk about them in a civilised manner. Try to talk each other down rather than escalating into aggression and hatred. Gets no one anywhere, really. 
just solidifies each side in their in their ways and yeah, hate breed hate I guess. I was having this argument with a um an old panel leader, good good dude, Terry. He was from Ireland and he was the manager here. Having an argument about what an A pillar is. I say that's your A pillar. I say that's your windscreen pillar. And he's saying that's your A pillar. So I read the job sheet on this and it says paint A pillar because of a chip. I see an A pillar chip, which is what I call that. But I just decided to paint the windscreen pillar just in case. Hey, hey Zaggy, how you going? All right, so ready to get some uh, color down on these soon. This is the bumper, a anti-static lock. I got anti-static in one of these atomizer bottles. I actually had someone else where I got this from. Fragrance Rex sent this one out, but you can get them all over the place. Not the only one to sell it, but yeah, the kind of bottle I have in my hand here was from Fragrance Rex. Don't usually give them too much of a poke on my raw channel, but well, if you are, I'm happy to sell. And it's one of those things that, yeah, they ship worldwide and they've got the online store. But I mean, you would imagine that. You know, if you were, say, in the US, you get one locally, it's cheaper than what you pay your shipping, you know, unless you're doing an order already, I probably wouldn't recommend specifically just ordering an atomizer bottle by itself. I'd imagine just any local auto body supplier would have them these days. Originally, they were um, the worst ones I first saw getting used in the finishing world. They were brake cleaner bottles. So they're designed to, you know, withstand the uh, harsh chemicals. Um, and yeah, now everyone sort of jumped on board. Car system, Cotillard have them now. But yeah, the first I ever seen was uh, the uh, worst brake cleaner bottle. So I've got a wet on wet that, that fender as well. I decided I'll get this, get a bit of plastic primer on here first. That can be flattened off while I'm crack soling the other panels. It's hard today, so forgive me if I'm not talking as quick and as enthusiastic as usual. It is Friday after all, so give me a break. quieter this week than usual and the boss was saying that they've got like lots of jobs in there but the panometers are just uh, lagging behind a little bit I think you know they'd like another panometer there's any panometers in first that are watching after his job hit us up in the comments So this is your standard plastic primer in here. Got the HB25 on here, something different. Because last night I just felt like, well, yesterday I was when I sprayed my last job. I just, I don't know, I like changing it up every now and then. And I felt like spraying clear coat with the HB25. I've been using this cap for base coat for quite some time. And quite impressive how it sprays the base. And I remember not really liking it for uh, clear coat. See in the band, it's cut small. I didn't like it. I did a review. I didn't really give it like, you know, didn't get a great review from me. And then 
recently in the comments I had someone say, oh, I've been using the HP 25 for clear and loving it. I thought, yeah, you know what, I may as well revisit it, just give it another crack. I was actually really impressed with how it spread the clear coat last night, so, yeah, it's, uh, worth giving another shot sometimes. You might not like something the first time, but give it another try. So I'm gonna clear this job again with it and see how she goes. That's our plastic primer down. Don't be shy with it. I like to give it a couple of coats just in case you miss the spot. Like one coat is enough of the plastic primer. The one coat plastic primer, but just in case I miss a bit. You know, you might just miss a little edge here or something. You don't want the, the paint to peel up because you didn't put enough uh, plastic primer in there. So I've got the wet on wet in the other gun, colour in the other gun, and some base coat blender in the other gun. So honestly, probably doesn't really need base coat blender, but this is one of those 50-50s. So like, yeah, you'd probably get away without it, but for what it's worth, it takes two seconds to put a bit of that blender down. It's probably a dark enough colour and it doesn't have heat and metallic in it, but it does have a bit. It's got, it's got a lot of pearl in there, which technically is metallic, actually, but, yeah. But, yeah, most of the time people just refer to metallic as your aluminium, but pearls actually are metallic as well. Um, the metal in pearls is called mica, the mineral. I believe um, primarily mined in Japan and I remember, oh geez, it must have been like 2009 or 10 they had that earthquake, oh no, was it a, was it a tsunami or a, a meltdown or something like that they had a, a disaster happen in Japan and it affected us like the paint supplier they wouldn't send out like a uh, backup stock of the Zerelic pearls and certain pearls because there was a shortage from Japan. So you know what, I might get this wet on wet on this bar and while it's drying I'll get some on the fender. Two bars from my wet on wet, I want to get it down nice and, nice and flat so that any orange peel isn't going to show through the final finish. If you, if you don't, I've had it happen before if you get this one like really thick and chunky, it's always just going to show through because it's, it's the ground. I think all this gets cut out actually. All those center spots, they, they don't actually end up being part of the bumper. It's just there for a, um, a bit of support, otherwise the car would fall in half. All these things here. And I'll just slice them out. And then Proceed to assemble the bumper bar. So I'll get this done before morning tea. It's about 9.30 now or thereabouts. Yeah, I mixed up 280. Probably could have gone 250 for the wet on wet. F4 is the colour of that wet on wet may not mean much to many of you, but F2 is like very light grey, F3 is like darker and all the way up to F6 which is like close to black, it's not actually black but it's close. So next up I'm going to be putting a piece of paper over that door. I might even put a bit over here because I don't really want too much wet on wet all over there. I just drag the uh, master machine in here. I don't usually do that when I'm painting, but it does like it this time, so I didn't have to walk back out two or three times. Oh,
I will go out and clean out that wet on wet gun while this wet on wet is flashing off. I want to go and brush it. If it was like the middle of summer and it was 40 degrees, I possibly would just give it just a, I don't know, couple of minutes flash off time, but. It is winter at the moment. I've got the boost set to 27. That's that's around when I usually like to set it. Well, this boost here, because it's so big, I spoke to the boost tech, the guy that fixes the boost, and he said, you know, the the burner in this booth is the same as the one in your other booth, but it gets uh, it's got to heat such a larger area. So we can get the other booth up to like 35 degrees. It's just that little bit smaller, so it doesn't have to work so hard to heat it up. Peel that masking off. I'm gonna go to put my base down. So this is what I'm gonna, you know, help with any string back, any of these cut screws, or there's a bit of filler there still actually, and cut through the steel so it'll help shrink back and just seal it down and also help in my covering on my top colour. You see this red on which it's just a cut harder than that primer. It also makes the entire panel one colour so it's going to be easier to cover. That's fine so I will, I'll leave that mask on until I come back. Clean that gun out and we should be able to put the bait there. Anyway, I'll uh, see you in a few minutes. Alright, so I've gone out and cleaned that wet on wet gun out. The bump is definitely flashed off. The fender is 90% of the way there. But the silicon around the nose um, was just starting to perish a little bit. It was, it was old. It lasted for like 13 years. I got my money's worth out of it. But I found one on eBay. It came all the way from the UK. I think it was like $150. That was awesome. And for the came with a, um, a plastic visor. And I had the old one with the glass visor, so I'm like, yep, I'm getting that, that glass visor back. I'm putting it back on this one. I actually did a review on this, you just haven't seen it on the main panel. But yeah, these, these uh, respirators, the Sunstrom SR200, they're worth, like, if you get them with the belt, you're looking at over a thousand dollars Australian. So they're really expensive, but you know the way I say it with these respirators? How much, like, what price do you put on your house? You know what I mean? These things keep the overspray out of your face, your eyes, everything. They deliver fresh, breathable air. So as long as you have the correct breathable system, breathable air system, um, you know, if, the way I look at it, if it adds one year to the end of your life, how much, oh, sorry, one, one week, even just one week to the end of your life, how much money do you make in a week? You're probably making around a thousand bucks, so you know that extra week, it's paid for itself. So yeah, you look at it the way you will, you look at your own health and safety the way you will, but that's the way I look at mine. Like these days, whenever I'm prepping outside, I'll be wearing a respirator. Always wear gloves when I'm spraying. 
Those who have been with me from the start will know I didn't always, I never used to wear gloves. I used to think they were pussies. <laughs> so that's the five double nine, base coat blender. This helps fill in those scrap scratches and aid the blend. So you can't see the scratches through the base coat. It doesn't say, you probably wouldn't have anyway. Yeah, I've got the T20 on here. Because probably remember a few minutes ago I was saying that I cleared with the HB25. So I just swap the caps over from my face coat and clear coat gun. Yeah, you see how I used to always spray my face with the T20? I used to love it. But these days I probably actually prefer the HB25 face coat. And I'm going to spray clear with the HB25 again on this one and see what I think of it. Might have to order another one in. Hey Chris, spray on dress. I need a new actor. So as you see, that's covering. Well, it's got the appearance of covering straight away. It's not fully covered yet, but that ground coat, honestly, it's just as good as putting a red down. That's how how well you get your coverage over um, this colour wet on wet with your reds off down anyway. Now, if I didn't put the ground coat down there, you'd be like five, six coats over a black. But we will know from this, this panel here. You can see it's still a bit lighter there than the door. But that's actually the reason I decided not to spray when I went over the front edge of that door. Because I'll, uh, I'll be able to know when it's covered when the two panels look exactly the same. You, that. And you know what, I might actually get my face coat here and then Go have my morning tea, it's nearly 10 o'clock. So that's going to give the base coat a few minutes to flash off. Dry down. But you can see, like, it's not fully covered yet, but that's, that's pretty damn good coverage considering that just one coat of red. It's actually pretty good. It's looking like just the standard three coats, it's probably going to be enough, or two and a half, whatever, two and a half, you know. Flashing off nice and quickly. So I mixed up 450 mils of red for this job. If it had been like a black or a different colour that covered better, I could have gone a little bit less, but the way I usually go is 300 mils per bump bar. And then I just went 150 for the fender and the blend. But it was like a darker colour, I could have gone say 250 for the bumper and then maybe 100 for the blend, but yeah, reds don't usually cover very well in solvent. Anyway, you go waterborne and it's dead, it covers one and a half coats really well. Well, that's the Trimax Pro I is anyway, I'm sure. They're not all the same. You see, I'm putting this coat on pretty wet and we should have pretty damn close to full coverage after that over this ground. The next one should just be right to go over with a tech. You know what I do sometimes, I'll do that and then I'll just put that extra coat over the edges just to be sure when they put the, uh, the panel on the, the leaf where it edges up it's definitely going to be covered. And you gotta remember, like, if you're painting this panel, you put that extra coat where it says you're not to. But this is a pretty damn close to full coverage. There was a little bit of a cup in, trying to overdo it. Better than a touch up anyway. So when I say 450 mils I made up, that's before thinners. So then gets thinned down at a 2 to 1 ratio. So 
ready for use or the end, end product I'm actually left with 450 mils. So yeah, you can see those two panels, they already look the same. I can't really see any colour difference, so the next coat will just, yeah, just be, be uh, to be sure to be short coat. What time are we looking at? Big 9.52, so about, yeah, 8 minutes till my morning tea. And then I'll let it, we just get 10 minutes here for morning tea. I'll let it flash off the 10 minutes over my morning tea break. Just gave me something clean. That should give it around 15 minutes full flash off time. Which, because I've had to put this on extra wet, it's probably a good idea. I've got some people ask me, oh, how long do you wait between face and clear? It's going to vary from job to job, you know. Because this is around, I've had to put it on that bit better than usual. Um, I can't hurt to give it 10 to 15. You know, I, I painted a three-stage towel last night, yesterday afternoon, and I actually left the blue kit baked for 10 minutes because there was wet on wet, coat of wet on wet. There was two coats, oh sorry, three coats of brown coat, white, and then two coats of uh, pearl. So, you know, that's a lot of material to put on. I gave it a 10 minute flash, oh sorry, I gave it a 10 minute bake and then a 10 minute flash after the bake. Um, and it was right to clear. But at the end of the day, you'll know. You'll get the hang of it, you know. You can still feel that's a little bit gummy. It's, it's, uh, it's starting to flash, but it's not quite 100%. But yeah, you can do things like this to blow air over it. If you're doing it in the garage, you're probably zero away from doing stuff like this. You're probably just going to be stirring up crap, um, creating turbulence and you know, if you've got dust and stuff from your prep work, it's just going to make, yeah, dust cleaning the job, but in a booth like this, it's pretty safe to do it. This air blower here actually drags in air. I can feel my fingers sucking towards that, so it's actually drags in a bit of extra blue there. It's not the highest pressure, but that's possibly because I've got this turn down as well. I've got to that last coat on and... All my edges, I'm pretty happy with my edges now. Just gonna go that medium wet sort of effect coat over the faces. It's gonna be right to call that good. Yeah, I found this color, like the metallic on the car stood up quite a bit. So when I put like a lighter coat on, it actually replicated the finish a little bit better. That's why I'm doing like a light coat here. A medium one, I guess. Yeah. Then my blend. I will give that a light pressure down before I clear it. Just to make sure it's nice and clean. Don't have any nifty overspray I'm spraying over. So yep, that's about us there gummies. I'm gonna go clean this gun out before morning tea. Have my morning tea, come back in 15 minutes with some clear in the gun and we'll slam it up, mate. Alright, so that's had about 25, 30 minutes to flush off. Got a mix of clear up, have my morning tea, and yeah, we'll clear her up. Plenty. I heated the clear up a little bit actually too. Yeah, this is going to come out clean. You just get that feeling when you start dragging it like it's nice and clean. So it's too bad pressure. So they've got a bit of orange peel in these things from factory, so 
who's been trying to be a hero and get it on dead flat or anything. HP 25, 1.3, full fan, three and a half on the fluid. So pretty much the same settings I use with the T20 cap. I'm gonna tack and whack it. Technically you're not really meant to with this clear, but I heated it up, so that's not gonna take long to flash off. And you can, like right? technically you're not meant to, but you can. Bit of thinners up there, bit of fade out thinner. That'll polish up within seconds, mate. Easy. I just got this bumper to do and we're done. Those do seem to suck up the paint. I did actually only um, allow 250 for this bar though. It's not a massive one. I'm just going to tack and whack it again. There's one coat followed by another cookie. Using that standoff clear, I'm just that little bit more conscious of material usage, try to keep it to a minimum. It's a bit more expensive than the group zone that we were using. But it's a lot better. Love this clear. Just stays glassy. Sometimes the other clear it, it'll look it off the gun and then give it a couple of days it'll die down. I could bring it up with a bath, but it's just a bit of unnecessary work. We're not having to do it anymore. That's us. How's that for an efficient mix, mate? I do that just about every time, no matter how big the job is. Anyway, that's it for a bit. Gonna go clean that clear gun out and I'll see you in the next one. Coming out, get out there and paint some shit.